right, so here is our next question. Um, once again, we'll start by covering up the answers, and we'll, you can see I've kind of already done that. Um, then we're going to read that last, last sentence, which is, you know, the question itself of the stem. Um, and here it says, which of the following cardiac structures is the most likely enlarged in, or most likely to be enlarged in this patient? So we have a cardiac structure that is going to be enlarged in this patient. So, so this is a normal echo, but it's going to ask us which one is going to be enlarged in this patient. So that means we're going to have to basically take our, our vignette and say, you know, hey, which one of these would be enlarged in this clinical scenario? So, um, so now we're going to move on to our step three, which is how many steps do you think requires? Well, this is probably a, a two-step question. Um, first, we need to know kind of what's going on with the patient or the diagnosis. Um, and then we need to figure out, you know, what's what's going to lead to, you know, which chamber is going to be enlarged. So, you know, first we have to figure out the diagnosis, like we said. Um, then we need to figure out, you know, which which cardiac chamber is going to be enlarged. So, two step two step question. Now, for step four, we're going to read the question just one sentence at a time, kind of thinking about it as we go. So, here we have a 63-year-old man for dyspnea, hemoptysis, and palpitations. Um, he's, he's immigrated from Russia and has a past medical history of rheumatic heart disease. Um, he's in visible distress on physical exam. His blood pressure is 111 over 70. His pulse is 120. His respiratory rate is 22. His O2 sat is 88% on remir. He's got his jug jugular venous pressure is 10 centimeters um, of water. And on chest auscultation, you have bilateral pulmonary crackles um, are heard. So you hear bilateral pulmonary crackles um, when he goes to his lungs. Uh, on cardiac exam, he's got diastolic murmur with an opening snap. He's admitted to the cardiac care unit and has started on appropriate treatment. An echo from a normal, normal health is shown. So this is an echo of a normal healthy patient. So this is not of our patient. Um, if they gave our patient, you know, it might give it away um, a little bit. So moving on from here, so now we've re read our question. Um, and now we want to look at that last sentence again. So which of the following cardiac structures we think is likely enlarged? And we'll kind of think of some answers. So, you know, I mean, we understand that our answer choices are going to be you know, our cardiac chambers, but which one do we think it's going to be? Why do we think it's going to be that? You know, kind of put some kind of mental thought and process into it here. Um, and then, so that's step five. And then moving on to step six, six we're going to uncover our answer choices. So when we uncover our answer choices, you know, hey, you know, as you can see, they're just, you know, kind of your, your, your diagram here. So you just need to be able to, you would need to be able to label the diagram yourself um, to answer this question, which that would be, you know, kind of a, um, a mental step uh, or an extra step um, to answer this question, which is which is good, um, but for here we'll kind of go through it. So, and now looking at our answer choices, we want to start once again at the bottom, working our way toward the top. Um, so at E, E is pointing to you know the apex of the left ventricle, and you can see that here. Um, and you know D, what do we think D is pointing at here? Well, D is pointing at your right atrium. So once again, E is pointing at the apex of the left ventricle, um, right atrium. C is pointing at the left atrium. B is pointing at the left ventricle. And A is pointing at the right ventricle. And once again, if, if you were just able to say you didn't understand exactly what you were looking at here, um, things to generally know about echocardi echocardiography um, and the heart and what's normal. Um, once again, the left ventricle is bigger than the right ventricle. So um, if you're looking you know, A versus B, um, so LV is bigger than RV, and this is once again a normal heart. So B should be bigger than A if this is the LV. So you can easily say that B is the LV. So that means A's got to be the RV. Um, and then you just, you know, if that's the RV, then this is the. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, if this is the RV, then this is the right atrium. And this is the LV. This is the left atrium. And then that's just the apex of the left ventricle. Um, all right. So now that we've kind of had some time to think about it. Um, I'll let you select an answer and we'll open our poll. All right, let me go ahead and open the poll for the folks here. All right. Please pick an answer. Which chamber do you think is enlarged? Or which area do you think is enlarged? Okay, looks like about half the foot.
Wait a couple more seconds. You guys are lucky. Dan actually <laughs> actually told you a little bit about what you were looking at the echo. Okay, let's uh, let's close the poll here. Uh, let's share the answer and majority majority of the folks said C. So let's see if that's right. And the answer is C left atrium. Excellent. All right, back to you, Dan. Yeah, could you show the PowerPoint itself? Okay, sure. Great, see great. It? Yeah, yeah. So um, so now we're just going to kind of walk through the question. So yeah, C is the correct answer, which is the left atrium there. Um, once again, this question did have a kind of an extra wrinkle if you didn't have um, any knowledge of, you know, normal cardiac structures and what they look, structures and what they look like on um, echo. Um, you know, this question would have been a little harder. I think you could have figured it out, you know, which one, which chambers are which, and then you just needed to figure out, you know, what is the question talking about and which chamber would we, would we expect to be enlarged? Um, in the setting of, you know, if they'd shown you a pathologic, um, you know, slide um, or pathologic image, then it might have been too easy, you know, to say, hey, the, the left atrium here is, you know, huge. Um, of course, it's the one that's enlarged. Um, so I think that's why I went with the normal here. So for this question, we have a 63 year old male that presents with some dys dyspnea, hemoptysis, and palpitation, palpitations. Other than his hemoptysis, this is a fairly non specific. Um, kind of presentation so we're just going to kind of keep reading um next we hear that um he's immigrated from russia and he has a past medical history of rheumatic heart disease um that's that's pretty important you know rheumatic heart disease is pretty rare in the u.s um something that's definitely seen in some other countries um you know kind of if you look at that kind of like the, the social side of medicine um and yeah something that that you know you end up on penicillin for and you know, we're trying to trying to you know prevent basically heart damage over the long haul um as opposed to you know just the, the stuff that's happened acutely and that's why we treat strep throat so aggressively aggressively here um so you know this is important um and then we kind of read on and we find out that you know um you know, he's a little tachycardic and his heart rates up a little bit or his respiratory rates up a little bit and his oxygen saturation is down a little bit so um all this is kind of starting to say hey you know we've got this guy he's got this heart history and he's kind of sick um so let's see what else they tell us um also find out that he's got some crackles and a murmur on exam so now we need to try to tie all of this information together. So um, knowing this, the fact that he is a little older, he's got a history of this rheumatic heart disease, um, he's short of breath and he's having pal palpitations. Um, the rheumatic heart disease makes us think of, you know, maybe some mitral valve problems. Um, you know, in the acute setting, um, you know, rheumatic heart, you know, or what you call it, rheumatic heart disease acutely, um, uh, can lead to basically some mitral regurge, but in the chronic setting, um, it leads to mitral stenosis. Um, so this is, you know, once again, something that's been going on a while for this man, if he's 63. Um, so we would think that, you know, hey, he's, he's probably got you know, maybe some mitral stenosis. Um, so uh, going on from there, um, you know, the, you know, mitral stenosis is usually due to basically, you know, that group A strep, you know, streptococcal pharyngitis. Um, and mitral stenosis in the setting of rheumatic heart disease is due to the untreated group A streptococcal pharyngitis that you know, he had a long, long time ago, and then you know, the body um, formed antibodies to it, and then the antibodies actually ended up you know, kind of cross-reacting or, or mimicking um, uh, those of the mitral valve, and you know, that's how kind of, kind of some of the, the pathophysiology of the disease happens here. Um, so from there, we can kind of say, hey, you know, so we think this guy has rheumatic heart disease, which led to mitral stenosis, and you know, is this consistent with what else they're telling us? So um, is our murmur consistent? Well, it, it is. So they tell us that he's got a, um, a diastolic murmur with an opening click. Um, and does that fit with mitral stenosis? It does. So that's great. So, so we've kind of got a, we've got a, you know, um, kind of an image or a, 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 a kind of guideline that we're going by on this question. So we've got our, our guy, he's coming in, he's pretty sick. Um, he's got this history of mitral uh, rheumatic heart disease, which would have led to Mitral stenosis and you know the mitral stenosis has a particular murmur which is a diastolic murmur with an opening um, click and, and that's kind of what we're hearing and that all fits and you know mitral stenosis should should lead to you know what we think is you know um, left atrial problems so that's really about all we would need to know to answer this question and if you think about stenosis and you know kind of your pressure volume overload that you would get within your 
um, your left atrium here. That, that's really all you got to have to answer this question. But there, there is a little bit more in this question that I did kind of want to unpack just kind of for fun's sake. Um, but uh, so we've got our guy, he's got our rheumatic heart disease, he's got the mitral stenosis, and you know, he's all of a sudden coming in kind of you know, tachycardic with palpitations and not feeling so well, um, short of breath. So kind of what do we think's kind of happened here? Well, um, you know, the, the volume overload on that left ventricle or left atrium, um, it's caused it to enlarge. Um, and I think he's, what's probably happened is he's gone into AFib. Um, so, and he's presenting with dyspnea and hemoptysis because he's lost his atrial kick. And now none of the blood that he was normally able to squeeze through that tight mitral valve is able to get through that mitral valve. And it's all backing up into the lungs, leading to you know, signs and symptoms of heart failure. Um, but his signs and symptoms of heart failure here aren't necessarily due to a poor squeezing LV. It's just due to the fact that blood can't get through the tight mitral valve due to his AFib and inability to generate any um, atrial squeeze. Um, that's leading to the crackles that we're hearing on exam, the hypoxia, um, the tachycardia, the palpitations, and kind of all that stuff. So, led to his acute presentation with the dyspnea, hemoptysis, and palpitations. And he's got the hemoptysis again um, because, once again, when you get the blood's going to back up into the lungs. You're going to get some leaking, some capillary leak there. Um, and then you're going to get some, you know, you start to cough and, you know, those type things. And then you cough up a little kind of foamy, frothy blood. Um, it won't be anything super significant. It's not like he's coughing up buckets of blood. So all that to say, that's kind of our question here, which a little bit more than we needed just to answer C, um, but uh, kind of it's kind of interesting there. So now if we want to go through the other answer choices, um, once again, and just kind of start down at the last answer choice and move our way up, um, you know, E, it's our LV apex again. Um, we, we, we know that's our LV apex. It shouldn't be a large tear. He's got mitral stenosis, um, doesn't have any LV problems. Um, D is our right, at, right atrium. Um, once again, it shouldn't be enlarged here. We're really expecting a left atrial problem. C is our left atrium, which is our correct answer in the setting of mitral stenosis. Um, we'd expect this to be enlarged. Um, B is our LV. We'd actually expect this to be normal sized in mitral stenosis. Um, so that would be kind of incorrect. Um, and then A is our RV, which we'd also kind of expect to be normal sized. So, all right.